Hey traders, Steve here from Jackrabbit Trader. And in the next few weeks, we're going to start looking into some of our trade school videos. And we're going to start this week by looking at how to identify support and resistance and also how to use those levels in your trading going forward. So if you're new here, we put new videos out every Wednesday. So please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you enjoy the content, please hit that like button and leave a comment. With that said, let's get started. All right, so support and resistance. What exactly does that mean? So support is an area where the actual stock price is supported. And that has to do with invisible levels that you can see when we start looking at technical analysis of where buyers overpower sellers. And on the opposite side, you have resistance, which is where the stock price may stall or start to fall from. And those are areas where sellers are outweighing the buyers. And again, you can see all these on the, on the chart, and this is one of the reasons I love technical analysis, is it's pretty clear once you understand what exactly you're looking for. So here on the chart, we're looking at a chart of the SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, over a three-year weekly chart. And as you know, we deal primarily in weekly charts. So this is our go-to uh, chart setup, a three-year weekly chart, regardless of what it is. I'm just using the SPY here. And I want to start by looking at finding support areas. So what we do is obviously the the latest stock price is off to the right. Okay. And as we work our way backwards, then we start to go back those three years. So the easiest thing to do is to go through the chart and find these inflection points. And it's these areas where the chart reversed. Okay, so here's one, here's another. All right, so here are all these inflection points. All right. And what you do is when you're finding those, you draw a line. All right, so here we're gonna go back, we found where it reversed, we draw a line. All right, and we're only gonna worry about support right now. We're not really worried about resistance. All right, so again, you go back, follow the chart, and then it reversed. So here's another line, okay? And then another one all the way back here. And the first thing you can do to see where exactly, you know, how strong a support area is, is on thinkorswim, you can actually take and you can extend the lines to the left. And when you do that, all of a sudden a couple different things show up and you start to realize that some of these inflection points are actually very important okay and you can see that here we have one and we have two all right so at two points on this 273 level the spy came back touched and bounced came back touched and bounced okay and then we have another area okay so let's clear those so let's draw in that 273 area right here. All right. And now you also have some resistance, right? So again, we're going to follow the chart. And now we're trying to find those highs where we reversed. So here's one. And then again, going back down. Here's another. And then back down. And then we'll just leave it at that for now. And again, if you take and extend those areas to the left, Okay, this one I'm not going to extend, but you can see that where we're currently trading also lined up with where we traded back in, uh, I'm doing this in the beginning or the middle of September, uh, so back at the beginning of August, okay, at that 301. And you also see that this resistance point right here, okay, lines up with resistance back here from September of 2018. All right, so that is the easiest way to identify horizontal resistance. And as you get really good at it, all right, it's just something that you have to continue to do and continue to do. Let's look at, we'll pull up the cues. I haven't looked at the cues in a long time. But realistically, you know, same thing. Here's a support area. Here's a support area. Here's a support area. Okay, same as what we just said. And then here you have resistance at the top resistance at the top 
resistance at the top. Okay, so you have resistance, which is where the stock's gonna start falling, and support where it starts to go back up. So now that you know that you can find horizontal resistance, there's also another one which we use to identify trend, but not necessarily as a level to trade against, at least not in my process. There's other traders that use these and they're called trend lines. And sticking on the cues, you'll see that if we had, we had identified these three support areas, right? We have one, two, and three, right? Those were all what we identified with horizontal resistance prior. But you could also then strike a line between all of them, and that is known as a trend line. I'll remove this. And now you can see that. And even though this arrow is pointing down, it's meant to just signal. But you can see that you have one touch, two touches, three touches of that same trend line. So you could also consider this to be a support area, right? And then going back to the three highs that we had, you could also consider that to be a resistance area, all right? So remember that these areas are on the chart. It's based on, obviously, much more... Uh, complex economics than just us finding horizontal and uh, support and resistance and trend lines, right? It's, it's based on demand for a stock, demand, uh, who's selling, who's buying, how many you know of, of each side, who outweighs the other. Again, a lot of economics in it, but it's basically the whole supply and demand um, uh, concept, all right? So, we'll look at another one. Now right, let's just go to Apple, all right? We'll clear the drawing set, it's old. We'll pick up our, our uh, uh, support area, or so our horizontal line. All right, so we're gonna work our way back, and to me, this is where stock was going down, then decided to go back up. Stock was going down, then decided to go back up. These are all inflection points. It's going down, going back up. Okay? So you have those three points. You could also draw the trend line. Okay? So all those are support, valid support areas. Some people may take the trade and say, hey, if it breaks this trend line, I'm out. Uh, I am more of a horizontal support kind of guy. I could care less about the trend line. But this is about teaching you different ways to use these these tools so here we are support resistance on the opposite side and clear the chart real quick resistance again you know going back stock was going you know uh, up goes back here's a level okay very important you could also see that it lines up so even though I wasn't able to I mean I knew it was there but even though I wasn't able to identify this area because it wasn't as clean as this resistance level where you were going up and pulled right back. Now that I've identified a different one, you can see that as you extend it to the right, it also does line up with a congestion or a consolidation uh, you know, on that same level. Okay, and then what, what I love even more is when you start to really dive into support and resistance, and again, we'll extend this to the left. So now what you have here you had an area where it was supported, so the stock was holding up over 211, came down, tried to get back up and over, couldn't do it, came down, tried to get back up and over, and this time, instead of pulling back hard, it just went sideways, all right? And that brings me to my next point of how do we use these support and resistance levels? Well, for me, there's two different types of trades. There's a breakout trade and a pullback trade, and we're going to get into those in a little bit further uh, in this small mini lesson. Um, a couple weeks from now, we'll talk about breakouts and pullbacks. But what you're trying to do with support and resistance is identify areas that you don't think the stock should go below. All right, and you have a support area. So in this situation, I could say, "Hey, I don't think this stock should go below 211." And if it does, then I'm wrong and I'm going to get out, okay? Or I am now trading it up to uh, a support area, 
our previous support, which became new resistance, right? So once we break this, it's a previous support that is now gonna act as resistance. So when we take a trade, we know that we can use those levels as targets. So let me bring up a chart that illustrates this pretty, pretty well. So we're gonna look at realty income, okay? And this was a trade that I made uh, in the Jackrabbit Club, which is my, my premium membership site. Uh, and if you're interested, head on over to jackrabbit.com, jackrabbittrader.com, and check out the membership page. But in reality, this is exactly what we're talking about, right? So I very rarely will look at resistance levels until I know my supports. So here, we were looking at O, which is realty income, and we noticed this consolidation and a breakout. So when we have a breakout, we're able to identify a support area. So we were able to identify this 55 level, okay, as a support, all right? And then what we were able to do is once we have support in play, and we're gonna go here and we're gonna Save that as the default. So now once we have a support level in play, we have a consolidation, we have a breakout. We're gonna take a trade. And again, we'll go over the breakout trade uh, a little further. But now what I'm gonna do is, you know, assuming that this is where we're at, okay? We had the breakout. So now I wanna look to the left of the breakout and see where are their potential resistance areas. Okay, so I have one here. We'll zoom out, it's a little easier to see but I have one here, okay? I have another one here, and I have another one here, which actually is a little bit more predominant than the other two, okay? Because you can see that it tried to get over it back here in the beginning of October, and then it also tried to get over it in the middle of February, and that was all of, it looks like 16 and 17, or 17 and 18, uh, 16 and 17, I think. So. Now what we're able to do is we're able to take this trade and we're, we know now that there is resistance above us. And what do we do at resistance? Well, in, in the previous situations, in those resistance points, stocks or that this stock, sellers have outweighed the buyers. So what do I want to be doing when we come up to that level? Okay, I want to know about it and I want to be selling some of my stock into that level, right? Not all of it. It's not guaranteed that it's going to immediately reverse. As you can see right here, it didn't immediately reverse. All right. So we want to just take a little bit off and then let the position work. All right. And let the position work. And sure enough, this trade, it blew right through that 63 level, which was the resistance. But then look at when it came back down. Where did it come to? It came right to 62, 63 and then bounced again. So again, remember, previous resistance becomes new support previous support becomes new resistance. All right, so we broke through, we came back, tested that previous resistance area, that became new support. Turned out that we then started going higher again. And now you can see that we're really not looking at any resistance points. There's nothing over here on the left. So we're letting the trade run and we're gonna see what happens. Okay. So with that, we're gonna look at moving that trade and moving the stop to previous resistance levels. And again, we'll go over it more, but just understand that the, the, the support and resistance is really what's framing this trade. In the same respect, we also traded the stock. We, we held onto the stock, it came up, right? And when it came up into this 73 area, it pulled back and we started moving lower, all right? So then it started to develop a bigger box okay so you have resistance at the top support at the bottom so what happens the next time and it comes I didn't know that this was resistance at first right there's nothing for me to reference to the left of the chart okay there's nothing over here and obviously I'm sure if I go back multiple you know more than three years then maybe that's that would be a different story but I didn't know this was resistance so now we come back we establish a new support and then we start breaking higher well, now at this level, I'm a little bit more aware. I'm a little bit more aware that, hey, last time we were here, we pulled back. Sure enough, tried to break higher, started pulling back, took half the position off, okay? 
came back down, you can look to add to your position, right? Hey, last time we were down here, people started buying the position, buying the stock. You could add to that, all right? And then here it is again. Oh, maybe we want to be selling because we're getting some um, selling again, right? At the same level, 73. And then ultimately broke out of a new, so it's a brand new trade. So you have pullback trades, you have breakout trades, but everything that we do, as far as what I do and what I teach at Jackrabbit Trader, is based on support and resistance. So this is a really critical element to understand. And I would really recommend just go into some charts. Go look at some charts, print them out, and draw horizontal lines. Don't worry so much about the trend lines, right? Because ultimately what makes a trend line is when you're getting higher lows and higher highs. Okay, so higher low, higher low, higher low, higher high, higher high, higher high. All right, similar to what we saw in the SPY. Okay, and again, higher low, higher low, higher low. And again, don't worry about the direction the arrow is pointing. I'm just using it as a marker. All right, and then here you go, higher high and higher high. So the trend in the SPY is up. All right, it's really you know how I use trend lines I guess you can call them I don't use uh, I'm more concerned about price levels all right and that is these horizontal resistance areas and they really like I said they really frame my entire process so I really recommend you know checking those out there's a couple quick ways to make sure that you are be able to identify these support and resistance levels all right and just find the lows and find the highs you know, especially on the weekly charts, a lot easier. And it's one of the reasons I don't use uh, daily charts that much. I mean, it's the same idea, but again, they're a lot sloppier. But again, no, me knowing what I'm looking for, I can go in here and say there's support, there's resistance, right? Here's resistance, and it should, and you can see, which is, you know, it always amazes me that they always seem to line up with each other. Okay, and again support areas down here all right and if you take this and actually extend it all the way to the left it's just here it is again and again and again all right so they're very very important in what we do and how we trade um, so forget about all the indicators and the the MACD and this and that just understand where your support and resistance areas are keep your charts super clean and just learn to identify them and learn how to profit from them. Again, we're buying at support, we're selling at resistance. Everything in between is just the journey to the other side. All right, so hope you guys enjoy that one. If you did, leave a comment, hit that like button. Remember to subscribe if you're new here, and we'll see you next week for a new video. Take care.